my so whatever you want to do and we'll I have uh well I was looking at Psalm 66. Okay. And um just a few verses. Let's see, verse um Let's do verses one through eight. Awesome. Okay. Make a joyful no noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing, they shall sing to thy name, Selah. Come and see the works of God's. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the, the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise be heard. I've read to you the first eight verses of Psalm 66. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. All right. So outside of your entire family are there any other <laughs> prayer requests i know i know just uh just continued i don't know um i haven't heard from the duncans i don't know how brother duncan is doing but i've had him on my he and valerie i've had val on my mind and sister duncan so keep them in your prayers and um you know, just for, I don't know where to, how Teresa's doing and all of our ladies who are not yet here, but who may be joining us later. Yeah. Okay. All right. And our pastor, of course, who was not feeling yes. today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I know those too. I've got all sort of colitis. And let me tell you, it is not a good time when those things flare up. You just have to kind of wait it out and yes. fill and yes. eat a bland diet if you want to eat it all and just kind of right. let it let it do its thing and then you know sometimes the next day you wake up and you're fine like it's and it's fine. done and but you just never really know when it's going to hit boy but when it does it'll ground you <laughs> oh yeah so i've been there so yeah. we'll keep him in prayer and yes just, not just our church family <clears throat> Oh, yeah, everybody. I know we're all it's been so long. That's a year and a half of <laughs> changing and, and praying and going through stuff and not having that physicality of your church family, you know, yes. uh, but at least we get the twice a month we get the, you know, parking lot services, which allows people to be able to fellowship a little bit you know in their own little way and then some wow. come and just zoom, take off right after because <laughs> they're still not comfortable and I totally get it you know oh I know and things have been things are building back up I was exactly. glad to be heading this way because you know Louisiana is one of the places they say that things are really uh oh, really boy. Been, been going I took my uh niece and nephew, my great niece and nephew to their appointment for their uh, vaccine, their vaccine at, at their school. And they started school last Thursday, last Friday. Oh, wow. So yeah, so so just uh, our schools begin, I think on the 12th, which is what is that Thursday? Today's the 10th. So yeah, yeah, yeah. this week, sometime this yeah. week. Hey there. You're here. Finally, man. <laughs> and after I got on, the thing kept saying something like, okay, now we need an update. I'm like, update. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Well, I was just about to do opening prayer. We were going through prayer requests. And then if you want to do closing prayer, that'll be fine. Uh -huh. 
uh, or open. I don't care. You could do either one, but I was just about to do it. We were just talking about our prayer requests. Our prayer requests. I don't, I don't mind doing a prayer. Okay. So um, anyone heard from Teresa? I no. asked. But, um, yeah, I asked Pastor the other day, and he said they're back, and they're just kind of getting back in the groove, and that, you know, yeah. they really, really well, and mm -hmm. so, but I haven't really heard much um, aside from that. Oh, okay. So, as far as I know, things are good, but I think now is just kind of that, you know, she's probably winding down from the past. I'm sure. They've been going through it for so long. Yeah, sure. Okay. Wait, hey, Pastor, oh. You're I'm home. at home. Pastor was not there today. He's got uh, some uh, like ulcer kind of stuff flaring uh -huh. up. So he was home today and we're going to keep him in prayer. And I said, you know what? Then I'm going to get out of here early and do my <laughs> study from home. <laughs> so I did. Wait a minute. That doesn't look like the church. Office. I know. <laughs> it's not it's i've got all my little my little store here my side <laughs> business that i have and so that's kind of what all that is and oh, okay well it looks very organized thank, well, you. thank you that's I know, right? you're not at the church are you <laughs> i am not i'm not it's kind of my office workout storeroom it's it's just been kind of a little bit of everything in here so <laughs> i like it i know i put all those shelves together myself i got them at bed bath and beyond and i was wow. i don't usually do stuff like that so i was very proud of myself of course it took me like a week but <laughs> whatever <laughs> very good. minimal swearing i have to say thank you jesus no it was <laughs> yes. i just not i don't have the patience for that kind of stuff and so it just i was so glad when it was over uh, that's nice. You well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to pray us in. I know Michelle's not coming and I'm not sure about Teresa and Diane. So it might just be the three of us, which is okay. awesome. It's not a, it's not a super long lesson. Okay. All right. Gracious heavenly father, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for time together. Thank you that you woke us up this morning and gave us our portion of health and strength and brought us back here together once again, just to share your word, Lord, and learn more about what saith the Lord. And before anything, we ask forgiveness of our sins, known and unknown. And we thank you for your amazing grace and your mercy. And Lord, I thank you for the hearts and minds of all three of us that are able to be here tonight. And we ask for a blessing upon those ladies that were not able to make it, um, Michelle and just getting back from, from her travels with her mom. And we know that she's tired and Lord, we just ask that you just heal her body and, and give her that rest that she needs as she recoups from all that traveling and being gone. And <clears throat> we just lift her and her whole family up to you and, and her mom too, who's probably missing her terribly already. And, and so we just thank yeah. you for her home safely. And uh, we just continue to lift them up in prayer. And Lord, we lift up sister Teresa to you and, and her son, Larry, and just that whole family that came together, Lord, while they all went through this and just helped to take care and that entire village that she has that just made it all happen. And we just thank and praise you that, that we're hearing nothing but great reports about Larry. And we know that it's, it's been a long haul for them. And we're just glad that they too made it home safely, Lord. And then we just continue to lift them up in prayer and we just continue to ask that you you just put your hedge of protection and light around them and continue to heal Larry in whatever capacity he needs it. And Lord, for Sister Alicia and, and her family and her family here and her family out of state, Lord, and just all around and Aletha's family, we continue to lift them all up in prayer, Lord. It's It's been quite a year and we just ask for your continued protection and anointing on Davion. And, and it was so good to see him the other day, Lord, and his, his mom and dad too. And, and just that whole family and that whole lineage, Lord, we just lift them up to you and sister Harriet and her entire family, both here and all over the nation. <laughs> so grateful yeah. that you brought her back uh, safely from her travels, Lord, and that you just 
lifted her up and her entire family and, and that they got to fellowship together and comfort each other in this time of, of grief, Lord, and that she got to see her sister. And, and Lord, we continue also to lift up her son, Aubrey, to you too. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Diane and you know uh, that she's here in spirit we know that she's not always able to make it Lord but we continue to ask that you just keep her protected and we lift up her and her entire family Lord and her ministry Lord the toddler church she's just so wonderful with it and touches so many lives and she just has such a heart for the little ones and we just ask that you continue to bless that and for me and my family, Lord, and all that we go through, my daughter, my son, my grandson, and my family, both here and in Costa Rica, and just kind of all over the nation as well, and my brothers and my sisters, and and all of that lineage as well. And we lift Deacon Duncan and Sister Betty Duncan up to you, Lord. We're not sure what is going on with Deacon Duncan right now. Uh, but you do, Lord. And so we just ask that whatever they need, that, you know, you said you would supply all of our needs fully. Um, and so we just ask that you continue to do that for them and bring them healing or uh, help and healing and restoration, whatever it is that they need, Lord. We just lift them up to you. And for our pastor who was not feeling well, Lord, we just ask that you lay your hands upon him now and heal his body wherever it is and we know that he takes on so much that you know some things some things sometimes that we deal with can come out in other ways in our body and so lord we just ask that you lift any burdens and and heal whatever spot in his body needs it continued prayers for our church and our church family and our staff for jim and our associate ministers, Reverend Parker, Reverend Francis, and their families, Lord, and we just continue to lift them up to you in prayer. Lord, we just, you know, we know that there's so many other prayer requests, and, and we just, all of those that we I may have forgotten or just don't know about, Lord, we just lift them all up to you in Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you for this study, and we just Thank you for the wisdom and understanding that it brings and the fellowship we get to have while we do it. And we're so grateful for this ministry. We love you. We praise you. We honor and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right. So not a hugely large lesson today. Let me bring it up. I think this is. Share. Yeah, there we go. Insiders and outsiders. So it's insiders and outsiders. Let me see if I can make this just a tiny bit bigger. There we go. Yeah. Kind of nice. And I I did not proofread, so I'll just apologize in advance. I'm sure I made some mistakes. I was like flying the keys today. I don't know. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Tuesday. So I, my goodness, I have those days. So yeah. insiders oh, yeah. and outsiders, and I think that it's not going to the, it's, I think like two verses, in Ephesians, and a lot of it's a few, um, few questions, but most of it is just reading, and a lot of it's about circumcision, the circumcision, the circumcision. <laughs> Circumcised and yes, exactly. and circumcised, oh, and circumcised. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I don't know. We'll 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 figure it. Out. We'll read all about it. So I don't know who wants to start. If anyone, I don't mind starting. I I guess I can start <laughs> <laughs> since I didn't do the other part. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> You can do it at the end. <laughs> History and English teachers are said to have compiled student bloopers on world um, history papers that author Richard Letterer collected and published. In one such blooper, the student confused circumscribed and circumcised and with unfortunate results. The offending paper said <laughs> Francis Drake circumcised the world with a hundred <laughs> yikes long before the descendants of uh, Abraham 
multiplied into a nation. God told his covenant people to engage in practice that set them apart. Circumcision, uh, so what exactly is it? All right, let me bring this up and I don't want it to make you dizzy. Hold on. Okay. There you go. Okay, Cir circumcision in verse 11, the cutting off of the foreskin of a penis on a young boy or man, but especially a baby as a religious rite. Female circumcision is now called female genital manip manipulation, manipulation. Mutilation. Uh, mutilation. Mutilation. mutilation, you're right. Oh, not, yeah, mutilation. And it's actually not an equivalent practice even though it is called circumcision. Yeah, just because no, that's horrible. Yes, it is. God gave the command to Abraham and his descendants to circumcise their son. For generations to come, every male among in your household are brought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring, Genesis 17 and 12. Circumcision, this sign of God's covenant was made, was done to male babies on their most personal part to remind them of the special relationship they had as God's own people. The Christian equivalent that designates a person as being in covenant with God is baptism. Okay, number one. With this in Oops, mind, sorry. okay. With this in mind, pray for in, <laughs> insight and read Ephesians 2, 11 and 12. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, are called uncircumcised by the so-called circumcision that is performed on the body by human hands, that you were at uh that you, wait, you were at that time without the Messiah, alienated from the citizenship of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay, I'll read to two. In the previous section of Ephesians, Paul has just established that every human is dead in sin, but has been shown grace. Having argued that all stand in need of a savior, Paul challenges, challenges his primarily Gentile audience to consider something. Just now, just how much their non-Jewish prejudice added to their outsider status. He paints a very dark picture so both Jew and Gentile will grasp the greatness of God's grace. What is the long imperative command in these two verses, 11 and 12? I put to be with God because the first time they said um, that you were at that time without the Messiah and then having no hope and without God in the world. What page is this? I'm sorry. 41 and 42. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that they were both at times without the Messiah. Even the circumcised and the uncircumcised, right? Both were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And alienated from the citizenship of Israel and strangers to the covenants of, of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That was just, was that 11 and 12? Mm-hmm. 
Mm, <laughs> what? I think you're right, Harry, because in the book it just says 11. Where's yeah. 12? No, you're right. I just see and I didn't type what was in the book, but you're right. That was just 11. So let's read 12, chapter 2, 11, and 12. My 12, the NIV says, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel. No, that's right. Okay, that's the same one. Yeah, they just didn't put 12. Yeah, okay. Okay. And hope without God in the world. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. Okay. Yeah, they just didn't mark it. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So anyway, I kind of thought the long, the, oh, the loan, not long. See, I knew it. What is the loan imperative? L-O-N-E, not L-O-N-G. <laughs> oh. Command in these two verses. And I said to be with God. Oh, what is the, okay. I didn't even uh, catch that. I, yeah. yeah. What is the loan imperative? And that, but that's still your answer would be correct still. Mm -hmm. that's what i got out of it is that yeah. they weren't he was saying they weren't with god and they weren't they right. were without the messiah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's kind mm. of what interesting yeah it's just the l-o-n-e but it's the same as what you said i believe mm hmm mm. What is the lone imperative in these two verses? Yeah. That just both groups were without, without God, right? Yeah. And that if they're saying that means command, I would think that so they can be with God, to be with God is, I don't know, that's kind of what I got out of it. That you were at a time. Yeah, because I think when it, it kind of says you were not citizens of Israel and you did not know about the agreements with the promises that God made to his people. So you had no hope and you did not know God. So he, I think he was kind of explaining that part to them. Mm -hmm. Oh, so not, not both groups, just the, just the uncircumcised. I yeah, I think that's what he's talking about. Imperative. Because he was saying, like, they didn't know anything about this, you know, about oh, okay. being circumcised since they weren't Jews. And, you know, and he was kind of explaining to them, I, this is what I get from it. That, um... Okay. Yeah, I was reading it wrong. Yeah. I think when he says you're not citizens of Israel, let yeah, me yeah. know that, you know. Right. The lone imperative. Yeah, so you must you must do this in order to be part of yeah, yeah with with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just says you, and you know, it's interesting now, you know, like it was just something that when you had kids coming up, you just automatically had your, you know, your boy yeah. circumcised. But now the doctors, you know, say, well, do you want it or not? And so some people are, you know, not doing that. Mm -hmm. You're right. And more and more people don't. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I guess I guess more so we would because you know we believe in you know the whole covenant and our agreement. But before I, you know I don't when I first got my son I don't think I real I didn't realize the importance of having him circumcised you know and what that really meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean you know you just automatically did it, but now looking back oh that's why boys are circumcised right and the <laughs> thing is like you were saying it was just something that we did and I remember when I had my son it was just like okay we need to schedule the circumcision it wasn't do we do you want to 
Bye. It was not a question. It was just a matter of fact, like, I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, oh my goodness, when they did it, oh God, help me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was I'm like, oh my I, goodness. Yeah. But it's so much better when they're babies. <laughs> I guess, when, yeah. When they're, when they're older and especially, you know, as an adult male, can you imagine having that done? How painful that must be. So, right, which they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, oh yeah, I keep thinking about when the males, when they got older and God told me had to do that, I'm like, ah, you suffered, didn't ya? <laughs> Oh, you weren't going to do anything for a while. Uh, but, yeah. but, why, but why, why would doctors do that later? I wasn't aware that they did that later other than for a religious reason. Because I know there was discussion with my son about whether we should or should not. Because I don't know. It was just like, why? <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. so um, but yeah, I wasn't aware that it was still, it was being done on adult people, adult men. Mm -hmm. But I guess it would be a religious thing. Yeah. For sure. I think that they find Christ if maybe they weren't raised and, you know, maybe yeah. their parents made that, you know, decision that they weren't going to do that mm -hmm. as an adult, they can change their mind and for religious reasons. I can't imagine any other reason that a man would want to go through that, you know? Right. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was looking at the one about the women and how oh. that, that is just, it's totally different and so much so much worse <laughs> you know right. and I don't understand the point of it though you know I know that a lot of African nations used to you know were doing that at one time I remember reading this book and I couldn't finish it when the lady was explaining what they had to go through in order to oh, do oh. this and, and how you know they had you know went in so I, Oh, that's for another discussion. But yeah, it was really, and I kept saying that is nowhere it says that women are supposed to have that done to them. Oh, I know. Well, I almost without, think it was tribal. Without yeah. saying more, it was a way to control the women with their personal female. That's true. You know, that's the best way I can say it. So yeah. Really. But yeah, you're right. right. That's, that's a discussion for another time. I know. That's why I, could, I stopped listening. <laughs> I get on this. That's <laughs> quite an interesting discussion, though, because I would be, I, you know, just curious. I mean, you wonder what women around the world have to go through, and we think we have it so horribly bad. And in some instances, maybe we do, but we do not have to go through things like that. Yeah. Of being, yeah. Of, of having something done to us where the word mutilated is in the description. I, oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is not going to be yeah, that's something that I would ever sign up for. I don't think any woman would, or maybe they do. I don't know, but we will. I think we'll visit that one again. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> that's when right. we're off the Next book one. record. Yes, yeah, exactly. When we're not <laughs> recording. <laughs> Um, okay, so Gentiles in the flesh, verse 11. Often when Paul speaks of the flesh, he is talking about being ruled by one's cravings. Yet here, he also means the phrase more literally, that is, in the physical body. Most of those reading his letter were physically Gentiles in the flesh. They lacked the bodily marker that identified them as children of Abraham. Instead, they were children of wrath, even as the rest. Verse three, not only did they lack the genealogy that gave them the inherited blessings of Abraham, but they also lacked the sign on their physical bodies, circumcision, that identified them as recipients of God's promises. Thus, all, both Jew and Gentile, were lost, even as the rest. The Gentiles were just lost as outsiders. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. The phrase translated here as Gentiles in the flesh was an unflattering Jewish idiom that meant nations in the flesh. But Paul doesn't let his own people off the hook here. He describes them as the so-called circumcision. Why? Both groups lacked circumcision of the heart. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Yep. So they were considered children of wrath when they weren't circumcised physically. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's saying, that even his own people, because he was Jewish, right? Before he was mm -hmm. Christian. And he's saying he doesn't let his own people off the hook. He describes them as so-called because even though physically they were all circumcised, they had, they lacked circumcision of the heart. Of the heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. Um, I'll read that first paragraph and then um, let me see by human hands. I'll read after that, after you. Okay. Um, by human hands, verse 12. When Paul refers to things as made by human hands, he usually has something negative in mind, like idols. <clears throat> Certainly he thinks made by hand things are inferior to anything God makes. So Paul is subtly setting up his readers for something better when he describes even circumcision as being made by human hands. I'm going to bring this up. Okay. This, should I begin? Sure. This made by human hands <coughs> emphasis shows up repeatedly in Paul's thinking. Bear in mind, he had a fantastic pedigree as a Jew. He told his friends at Philippi that he was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless, Philippians 3, 5 through 7. Thus, he is not addressing everyone's inferior circumcision as an outsider, but as an insider. He is not addressing. Okay. When Paul preached to Gentiles in Athens, he looked around at the many, at the people's many altars to gods in the Pantheon, and he said, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And his is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Acts 17, 24 to 25. Let me bring this up. Paul will go on to argue in our text here in Ephesians that something humans do, circumcise the body, is inferior to what God does, circumcise mm -hmm. the heart. Although Gentiles were left out in earlier times over externals, circumcision, now through Christ they can enter fellowship. A ritual practice with an originally good intent cannot keep them out. In his letter to the church at Colossae, Paul argues that physical circumcision, circumcision means nothing spiritual because God has circumcised the believing Gentiles with a better circumcision, that of the heart. Mm. Colossians 2, 11. Hmm. I want to read Colossians. Yeah. Sorry, I just, before you keep going, I want to read Colossians 2, 11 because I'm, I think all this circumcision talk, I'm, I'm missing something. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. There we go. 11. Uh, this one says, in him you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. Okay. 
-hmm. that's what he I, there was that one spot up about how he was saying this let me go up really quick um, thus, he is not addressing everyone's inferior circumcision as an outsider, but as an insider. So what he's saying is he was circumcised as a Jew on, on the eighth day after he was born, right? Because mm -hmm. that's when they do it. They do it at eight days old. And so I, and I'm kind of talking this out so that I know I'm understanding it correctly. So he's saying mm. how he was circumcised of the people of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to their law, a Pharisee, mm -hmm. as to Zeal, a persecutor of the church. Um, thus, so he's not insider. So an insider being a Jew first. Right? Or I think I, I may be overthinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thus, he is not yeah. a person. Okay, so yeah, he's not on the outside looking in, judging, because they were saying that he, um, he, he didn't give his own people a break either, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning the Jews. Mm -hmm. So he's right. saying and calling it's, them the so-called, the so-called circumcision. So-called. So he's mm -hmm. not addressing them as if he doesn't know he knows because he had he he was there he was he was a jew he was you know he knows what they went through so he's not doing it as if he doesn't know what it's like to be a jew right not mm -hmm. as an outsider but as an insider mm -hmm. i may be i'm sure it's much more simple <laughs> Well, and he and he's talking about now what you were reading in the in the uh, this is the new uh, the NIV um, in whom ye also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and so that's the part where he's talking about the circumcision of the heart, of the heart right and even though you could do you know everybody was doing it on the eighth day or whenever and it was just but it was the the circumcision, I guess, of of with flesh with the hands instead of with with. It didn't mean that you were still circumcised with the heart. It's kind of what it says to me. I don't know. What do you guys? Mm. So it's the circumcision yeah. made. It's the one that that he's recognizing that's made without hands. Right. You could just. You could just go through that whole pro procedure and still not have it affect what you're feeling in your heart. Mm -hmm. Right. He did say what God does is superior. Isn't that, is that the word he used mm -hmm. to what man does with his hands? Yes. Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Do you want to keep reading or you want, oh. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Where, where, uh, where did I start? Paul's, Paul explains. Paul explains this idea even more fully in his letter to the church at Rome. It is really important to him. For a person <laughs> is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision something that is outward in the flesh. But someone is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart by the spirit and not by the written code. Romans 2. 28 through 29. So I think that kind of confirms what we're saying. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Paul's seemingly radical thinking about circumcision of the heart here is actually not a new idea. It came from God himself centuries earlier, six and a half centuries earlier to be exact. As recorded by the prophet Jeremiah, God told his people that he preferred heart righteousness to externals. Circumcise mm. yourselves to the Lord and remove the foreskins of your heart. Jeremiah 4 and 4. Yeah, so that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Circumcise yourself to the Lord. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
What four disadvantages did Gentiles have that had made them far away? What four disadvantages? Okay, one. Hmm. What? Oh. So I have the answer I wrote whenever we did this last time. <laughs> I, I do too. Uh -huh. Now I'm trying to say, wait a minute, let me see. Here. I know. <laughs> what did I write? Yeah, I put. Oh, that and it it uh, yeah, it references that verse twelve. Mm -hmm. What four? You have the four what, disadvantages. I put. They weren't Jews. Uh, they were uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. They were without Christ. They didn't know about the promise, promise God had made to his people. One, two, three. Yeah. I had put not circumcised physically, mm -hmm. worshiped man-made idols, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. not Christ believers, and mm -hmm. not heart circumcised. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> yes. Hmm. Because they're talking about the Gentiles. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Verse 12, let's see. That you were at the, out the Messiah, alienated from the citizenship of Israel and strangers mm -hmm. from the covenants of promise, mm -hmm. having yeah, no hope right. about God in the world. Yeah. Okay. And there you go. Hmm. All right. I'll stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. Sounds good to me. It sounds good. It sounded good then. It sounds good now. Good now. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't mind unless someone else wants to read. Let's see. Hold on. How much more do we have? This. Uh, we're at the very we're at the end. Oh yeah, we're at the end. Um, I can read, I don't know, you can't see me do that. I can read <laughs> um, these next three paragraphs. Okay. okay. That's good. Alien, alienated from the citizenship of Israel, verse 12. Paul probably has in mind here, not the Gentiles' geographic location, but their exclusion from the social, political, theological covenant community of Israel strangers to i wonder if this is three of the four i know that i was thinking that mm -hmm. too because it says verse 12 verse 12 verse 12 strangers to the covenants of promise verse 12 like refugees without rights in a new land the gentiles were outsiders when it came to the amazing covenants god made with the jewish people Without God, verse 12, the irony in Paul's basically calling Gentiles in their pre-Christ state mm -hmm. atheists mm -hmm. is that Gentiles in the first century Greco-Romans world called Jews atheists for refusal to worship the many gods in Pantheon. Hmm. What's Pantheon? In the Pantheon. <laughs> For their refusal to worship the many gods in the pantheon. I'm going to look it up. I don't know what that They're, is. Yeah, I, I don't, I have an idea, but I don't know how it's used here. Many gods in the pantheon. I know that pan, I know that pan means all. <laughs> oh, it's a Roman temple in Rome, Italy. It's still there. The name, hold on, it says the name Pantheon is from the ancient Greek Pantheon, meaning of relating to or common to all the gods. Yeah, pan means all, Pantheon, so all, all the, all theology or all, I don't know what the other part means. My pantheon. goodness, it's still there. It says the Pantheon is really huge. Oh my goodness. The Pantheon is a former Roman temple, and since the year 609, a Catholic church in Rome, Italy, on the site of an earlier temple commissioned by Marcus Agrippa during the reign of Augustus. It was rebuilt by the Emperor Hadrian and probably dedicated 
uh, circa 126 AD. So it's like a museum now. It's still there. That is crazy. But what does Pantheon mean? A small p. That Pantheon would is that a capital P? You're right. Yeah. What's the small? See, what's the small? So Pantheon, that one is the name of that building. But the other one, what does pan, a small, Pantheon mean with a small p? Let me look. Pantheon meaning. Okay, come on. Did we stump you? Pantheon, a group, oh, <laughs> a, gr <laughs> a group of particularly respected, famous, or important people, the pantheon of all of the all time greats, all mm -hmm. the gods of a people or religion collectively. So yeah. it's like a group of. So I was totally off there. I got like, all excited. I'm like, oh, it's all still the there. We need to take a trip. Oh. <laughs> well, here, um, my dictionary says it's uh, traditionally thought to have been designed as a temple for Roman gods. The structured name is uh, derived from the Greek word pan, meaning all, and theos, meaning God. The original pantheon was destroyed in a fire around 800 AD. It was rebuilt by Emperor Domitian only to be burned down again in 110 AD. So, and then it says, and it said it, it is important, it's important lies in the fact that it is the best reserved monument from ancient Rome throughout its history. The Pantheon innovated combination of both Greek and Roman style has been admired by many. In fact, the Pantheon has served as inspiration for many replicas throughout mm -hmm. Europe. Mm, never knew it was it's famous. Got, yeah. no. So it's got two very uh, distinct meanings. Yeah, interesting. Very. I just, I read that and I typed it earlier. I'm like, don't know what that is, but okay. Um, let's see. Oops. Um, who wants to read the rest? Where is it? Oh, I guess I can. Is this, are we where so? So there it is. Yeah. Okay. okay, so there it is. Paul has told the Gentiles to remember how lost they were, but he gives little hints and reminders that the Jews were lost too. One group may have more advantages, but they were also lost. Yet the word, yet the next words in Paul's text will change everything. But now in Christ Jesus. Okay. These are the pivot words on them, both horizontally and vertically, relationships change. But now in Christ Jesus, you who used to be far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Verse 13. Hey, Jesus. If you are a Gentile, give thanks that Christ, the covenant blessing of the Jewish people are extended to you. If you are Jewish, give thanks that your heritage and your long promised Messiah all nations of the world are blessed. Mm. Genesis 22 to 18. God's plan all along was inclusion. Abraham was chosen that his descendants might be the means of grace for all who were lost. External circumcision was intended to signify an internal commitment, but led to the insider outsider status the promised jewish messiah came for all the world to reconcile all people to god and all humans to each other wow keep jesus yeah i love that god's plan all along was inclusion yeah yeah. Mm. Yeah. Goes back to Adam and Eve. 
right? <laughs> like that our Gentile give thanks that through Christ the covenant blessings of the Jewish people are extended to you. And if you're Jewish, give thanks that through your heritage and your long promised Messiah, all nations of the world are blessed. So we're blessed coming in and we're blessed <laughs> no matter right, which huh? way we turn. No we are it. blessed. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Winning. <Yeah. laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Oh, so that's that one. Next week, we will have the embodiment of peace. The embodiment of peace. Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. That one's a little bit longer. That one is a little bit longer. So I better get yeah. to typing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. This is nothing. I, I type Jim's lessons every week for his noonday Bible study, and those are long ones. Those that one takes me like an hour each week. Oh wow. <laughs> but I enjoy it because I kind of do the lesson while I'm typing it. So it's kind of neat. Mm. Wow. But yeah, so That's good. That's well, awesome. Good. Any other comments or questions? No. Church was good Sunday. It was, I know. And then we, I, I felt bad because I was standing there and I think she just wanted to catch up and talk to you. I'm like, I'm going to let you guys catch up. Edwina, Edwina Ho came in. It was we had was just nice. ended, but um, she came in and she was all excited to see Alicia. And I'm like, okay, I'll just I'll like, step out. She was just excited to be at church. I know. <laughs> I was listening to it on Facebook, and I said, let me just drive by the church. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So the twenty. Second, we'll be out there again. So not the this Sunday, one. but the next. And are we still in the tent? Yep. We have the permit for the tent through September. So oh, that's right. You said that. Yeah. So maybe out October there. October starts coming the cold weather. What's that? You may be out there another month. <laughs> so I know. I we'll see. It depends on this COVID. Uh, Delta thing too. I know. I can't believe it's just, it's getting worse. I getting know. Worse. What oh. what are they saying for Davion's uh, school? He's a, they're supposed to have so far. They're supposed to wear masks, and uh, I'm not. I haven't talked to his mother again to find out what's going to go on. She said she she said I don't know if they're going to you know finish off the year like they did last year what's really going to happen so right. you know because they don't you know they really don't know and, yeah. uh, and especially Different for every young, day. yeah so and I know she I think she said some of the kids had gone back to school and 20 of them ended up with COVID oh and so it, you know, it's scary because you don't know, even even though the parents may be vaccinated, some of them are not, but people they come in contact with because you, you never really know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah it's really been, I'm really scared. I know they're supposed to be going to um, on the Disney cruise in Florida. And I said, look, you guys, you got a double mask make sure you have all your you know you know in your hand sanitizer everything that you need and i won't see you for two weeks after you get back <laughs> <laughs> don't come over here that's right stay away from you for two weeks <laughs> ow yeah, yeah that's scary yeah and but I'm really glad to hear that the the um, parents or the school district, well, you know, like the governor came out and said, no, the kids don't have to wear masks. They don't have to do this. And the school district, a lot of them said they're ignoring him and they're going to go ahead with the mask mandate. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, <laughs> Good for that. I know. It's really. Oh, it's just, 
you don't, they don't realize that kids are susceptible. They feel like, oh, no, kids can't get it. Oh, they, and yeah, that's what they said about young people. And, you know, a lot right. of right. younger Love people are getting it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Article today about how it's affecting this new round is affecting the youth even worse. Like tons of the youth are getting it. So it's not um, right. They were saying how it affects your IQ. They say they don't know if it's permanent or is it something that you know is just you know how how it's gonna how your body is gonna react to that. Yeah. And I said, oh gosh, just because we don't want to wear that. How ridiculous is that? Yeah. Now, even if you do, I mean, I don't want to wear a mask either, but, you know, if I'm going to help myself or someone else, then, yeah, I'm going to wear it, you know. Exactly. I, was, I met this girl, and uh, we were somewhere, and all of us were all vaccinated and we're at this thing, and, uh, and she said, you know what, uh, some of the people had their masks on, some didn't, and she said, I'm going to keep mine on, she said, because she was um, on dialysis. And uh, and she said, and even though I've had been vaccinated, she said, I'm in contact with other people that, you know, who have who are on dialysis. And she said, I don't want to give them it. And I said, this is what we should be thinking about. You know, I don't want to give it to someone else, you know, because I wasn't being careful or something. And I said, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, we're talking about circumcised and uncircumcised. Our big thing now is vaccinated and unvaccinated right now in the world. Know, that's, our, huh? that's our struggle right now. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, right. you know I, and it, yeah, well, yeah, it's interesting. Oh, I know. So we'll see how it plays out. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I haven't stopped wearing my mask, I haven't stopped being safe. So you know, yeah, same here. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. still gonna do it. And honestly, like I, with everything, the air quality and everything like that, I, I'm so used oh, to it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm good now. It's, you know, it's- The air is yeah. so bad. I mean, yeah. oh my yeah. God. So I'm, it's, it doesn't bother me anymore. It just, it's fine. I don't mind. Yeah, just be careful. Yeah. All right, you want- Pray us out. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to continue to uh, pray us out. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, short prayer. <laughs> yes, I have, I have my father. We're just so thankful that you have allowed us three to come together and just study your word and to give praise and thanks to you, our heavenly father. We're so glad that you sent your son down for us, you know, that you made a place for us and that you want us to be with you. So, Lord, we just want to continue to uplift you and praise you as we go forth. We want to, we ask you to look upon our pastor who isn't feeling well and give him the strength so that he will, you know, endure and become better. Give him the medications that he needs in order that he will become strong. So, Lord, we just ask that you you know, look upon all the workers that are working at the church and just strengthen them and keep them faithful to you as they go forth. And we thank you for, the, you know, the, the Bible classes and Maria typing up all the lessons and making sure that everyone has what they need in order to survive. So, Lord, we just thank you for this word. And we pray and we are patient for when we enter the church again, Lord. But when we go back in the church, have us be filled with your love and your glory, and that we'll be worshiping you, our Heavenly Father. All these things we ask in our Son's name and for his sake, we pray. Amen. And what's that noise? <laughs> I know. What is that? I hear nothing. Now I don't hear anything, but while Sister Alicia was praying, I heard like scratching or something, almost like papers rustling or I don't know maybe 
to be my dog underneath the table. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that was probably it. That was it probably was, it. Yeah. I know I locked mine out of the room. I finally closed the door because they yeah. started barking as soon as I got online. Wherever I am, she tends to. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be by me or near me or somewhere. somewhere. Oh, God. All right. Well, we will see you uh, well on online, but we'll see you next Tuesday, I guess. And, uh, yeah, and then after that, we'll see you at on church. 22nd, <laughs> yes, outside. So, Harry, are you actually going back to school? I'm I'm not, but I've been asked to, to come uh, 10 days, I'm not sure when, in uh, September. Oh, okay. So I won't be going back, you know, right away. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and, I, and they haven't given me the dates yet, and I don't know who I'll be filling in for, but, um, yeah, so I'll be doing a few days in September. School. You don't know the school either, right? Yeah, I don't know what school either. But mm. I know Santa Rosa, it'll be Santa Rosa City Schools, but I think they, uh, what, what did we say? They start on Thursday on the 12th. Wow. It's yeah. so weird, all these schools starting at different times. It's just like, ah! <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. I remember the time we all started right after what is it, Labor Day? Oh, yeah. So you this know, seems after, so early to me, yeah. you know? Yeah. It really does. Okay, well, All you right, have a right. blessed time back. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, so glad good. you're back. It's so yeah. good to see you guys. I missed you. And I thought I was going to, I thought about, well, I didn't have my laptop, but I had, I took my tablet with me. And I thought about Tuesday, but I was doing, there was something else I was doing. And, um, oh, oh, briefly, are, are we still on? Are we still taping? Uh, yeah, let me, let me pause <laughs> it and then. Here we go. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. And then let me.